You're listening to The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, your escape to reality. We've had a number of emails recently about cell phones and cancer, and there have been a few studies out in the last few months on this topic, so it's no surprise that uh, we've gotten a number of questions. So the question is, Do does using a cell phone increase the risk of developing either cancer in general or brain cancer specifically? You know, I certainly hope that it turns out that the answer to this question is no. Um, but this is one of those questions where we do not have a definitive answer yet. The epidemiological research is mixed. So when you look at it in different ways, you look at people who have brain cancer and see, is there any differences between their cell phone use from people who don't? If you look at people who use cell phones versus people who don't use cell phones or different amounts or one side versus the other, whether or not they develop, have a higher risk of brain tumors is fairly mixed. Uh, There was a recent meta-analysis, and this is one of the studies that has uh, prompted a lot of the emails that we've been getting. You know how we feel about meta-analysis. A meta-analysis isn't new data. It's just pooling prior studies. It introduces another layer of complexity and variables that can introduce artifacts into the results. I don't think it really personally adds much to the body of literature. Um, I prefer systematic reviews myself, although they do serve different purposes. So this meta-analysis concluded that for people with greater than 10 years of exposure, that there was a increase, a significant increase in certain types of brain cancer, gliomas and acoustic neuromas. Prior studies have not shown a correlation or not consistently, although the, the critics said, well, that's because they didn't look for more than 10 years and maybe it takes time, there's a latency. If you look at greater than 10 years, maybe there will be an effect This meta-analysis supports the notion that maybe there is a a weak effect for use greater than 10 years, Um, although there was a UK study that was published after the meta-analysis did its analysis, so this data was not taken into consideration. This is a very large study which showed no correlation with cell phones, including um, for greater than 10 years use. So... The answer right now is there is certainly no strong signal out there, meaning that there is no strong effect or strong correlation between cell phone use, the duration of cell phone use, and brain cancer. If there were, then I think that we would be seeing a more consistent pattern in the research. Again, you have to interpret the literature, not any one study. The literature does not show a consistent pattern. But neither has it been negative enough to say that there clearly isn't any correlation. So I think where we are right now, if you break it up into less than 10 years of exposure, I would say that the results are mixed but are leaning negative. And if you look at greater than 10 years of exposure, I would say that they're mixed but they're leaning weakly positive. And everyone agrees that we need more and beta and better data in order to... Um, put this question to rest one way or the other. How concerned should people be, Steve? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, again, I think at this point that it's we should be mildly concerned. I don't think that there's any need to panic. Uh, I don't think there's any need to stop using cell phones. What um, the recommendations from the FDA and the National Cancer Institute and other organizations are all pretty much the same. One is they basically they all say the same thing. If you are concerned about this, they're not saying you should be concerned. They're just saying if you're concerned, what can you do about it? Well, you could use your cell phone less. Like, that's, that's not a, a big reach. Okay, that's out like of the you, question. Move on. Yeah, like, like only in emergencies or... <laughs> yeah, I got people to talk to. What's next? <laughs> the next one is get a head get head a headpiece or a headphone so that you're not putting the antenna right next to your head. I guess the antenna is where you get a lot of the uh, actual radiation. Those things look dorky. What else? There's also a recommendation not to allow small children to use cell phones. But there's no real evidence to back that up. It's purely speculative. It's the notion that their skulls are thinner, their brains are smaller, they're still developing, and if they start using it now, their duration of total duration of exposure will be longer. So they're recommending caution in allowing children to use cell phones. Well, none of that is any good for me because I just hired a seven-year-old personal assistant and I'm not trading her in. 
You got to get her one of those head headphones, the headpieces. That's all. I guess so. Have you ever tried training a seven year old how to use one of those things? It's nuts. Yes, twice. You know, but uh. it's first of all, there lots of states are passing laws about not driving unless talking on the phone. You know, use a headset. They're they're actually very. A lot of them are very comfortable, and the sound quality is fine. There's just no excuse now not to use a headset. Yeah. That, Although the yeah, driving laws, the of course, are, are have to do with just mm. driving safety, not about the radiation risk. Keep keep the phone on your belt near your groin. You'll be all set. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can I just say as a girl, don't, guys, don't do that. It looks so dorky. Okay, go on. <laughs> do what, the cell phone on the hip? The cell phone on the, the yeah, the, the phaser. Don't do it. <laughs> Star, the Star Ooh, Trek seriously. next gen phaser. Don't do it. Where else are you going to wear your cell phone yeah. if not on your hip? Yeah. Let me ask you a question. You can what carry what it in your pocket, in your man purse. Why won't women wear <laughs> cell phones on their hip? I don't get it. Yeah. Because it looks ridiculous. But you know what? My wife throws her cell phone in the purse, and then she can't hear it ring. So she <laughs> yeah, doesn't answer. Yeah, but she doesn't look ridiculous, does she? No, yeah, but she doesn't she answer her cell phone. No, but she's, she's, she's just being impractical. <laughs> yeah, and she's not getting brain cancer because she's not uh, answering her phone all the time because she can't find it. There. Problem solved. Or groin cancer. I'm not going to advocate that people wear, like, fanny packs or anything, but I think this is oh, one God. case where function trumps fashion. No, no, no. no. It is practically... <laughs> You are right next to Fanny. Pat. No, no, no. This like, is totally different. I know that you've no. been walking down the street thinking, you know, this phone clip to my belt is Look. cool and all, but wouldn't it be better if I could stick a little bit of money next to the phone or maybe put my keys there? Hey, you know, I should get like a, a larger sack to carry the phone in. No, you're missing and it. Then, Rebecca, you're missing you're the whole angle here. First of all, wearing an electronic device on your hip is way cool. Okay? That's oh, yeah. number one. It's oh, you magnet. are so confused. Number two babe magnet. is we're not. <laughs> we're, magnet. You're going in the wrong direction by going towards a fanny pack. We should be going in the utility belt direction. Oh, oh I agree. Oh, Batman. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. You're a genius. <laughs> yeah, awesome. yeah, Batman. That's a great idea. Um, have you considered a cowl while you're at it? A cowl? Cowl? A cowl pulled over your face, yes. Maybe those are only for evil. Ears. Those are for villains, not heroes. No, but Come you on, can have... Uh, Batman has a cowl. Hello? He, well, he's the Dark Knight, okay? He's right on the edge. Uh, he's cool. Kick just Superman's don't do it, ass. okay? It's bad. You can have like a little uh, a like idea. a little change thing on there. You could... Yeah. You know, if you can get a really... The only way an electrical device attached to your hip is going to get you laid is if it's a vibrator, <laughs> okay? <laughs> The utility belt. We've got to work on that. We've got to think of what goes in the utility belt, how it's going to arrange them together. This, a giant dildo. This is, this is, is unexplored <laughs> territory, I'm telling you. Re- Rebecca, Rebecca, you've seen Star Trek, right? Okay. <laughs> yes. 19, 1966, Captain Kirk getting ready to call Scotty up in the end. I mean, come on. That's it. That, that's ever since then. And he always got the, the green babes. So oh, that's true. Every show. Yeah, well, you know, let, you let me know how many green babes you bang bang the next time you're out. Well, I'm, your, I'm married, uh, so it's not a good it's not a good test. But it, I, I was going to finish up this piece by talking about the fact that there are a lot of quack devices out there that promise to protect you from the radiation from your cell phones. These fall into one of three categories. They're completely woo devices that do nothing. Woo. Crystals woo. or magic or whatever. Two is they pretend to be technological, but they don't do anything. And the third is they actually shield from radiation, but they interrupt the actual signal from the phone. There's there's no way to shield you from the radiation without shielding the phone from the signal. So there's no device that actually works, even if it says it can do that. Yeah, other than using, you know, like a, a headset. That's it. I want to hold the phone far away and shout into it. That might work. That's what my mother does. You know what? I'm surprised that a cell phone company flat out just hasn't come out with a phone that looks like a Star Trek communicator. They've got to be out there. I think I've seen one. You know, clamshell, when you open it, you know, the whole bit. I'm in. I'll take a dozen. More unexplored territory. And you combine that with the utility belt, Jay, and, I mean, you know, you're off to the How did you guys (laughs) ever get married? This video has been adapted from The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, a weekly science podcast. For more information, visit us at www.theskepticsguide.org. Thank you.